The Ethereum blockchain is currently seen as the dominant layer one protocol. Its use of smart contracts, as well as an active user base, is quite impressive. However, its race to the world's computer is filled with difficulties. Several big issues exist with Ethereum at the moment, like high transaction costs and slow confirmation times. As a result, Tezos, a proof-of-stake blockchain that is designed to evolve over time without requiring a hard fork, has seen a surge in popularity over the last couple years. Welcome to Whiteboard Crypto, the number one YouTube channel for crypto education, and here we explain topics of the cryptocurrency world using analogies, stories, and examples so that you can easily understand them. In this video, we are going to be explaining what Tezos is, specifically how it works, and even how it might be better than Ethereum. So first off, what is Tezos? Fundamentally, Tezos is a self-amending blockchain that has a bunch of the same features as Ethereum, but with a few improvements. Tezos is an open source blockchain and application platform that can actually upgrade itself and develop smoothly. What does this mean? Well, upgrades to the core protocol, including even the self-amendment process itself, are decided upon by people who hold and stake the Tezos coin. This means if you own some Tezos, you can stake it and actually have some voting power in the network. Many see it as the protocol to solve one of the most significant flaws in blockchain technology right now. The Tezos token, traded under the symbol XTZ, is also known as a Tez. A Tezos is not dependent on mining. Instead, token holders are rewarded for participating in the blockchain's proof-of-stake consensus method, which is a part of the reason why many say it's superior to Ethereum, or at least until Ethereum supposedly upgrades to 2.0. Oh, and by the way, if you stake Tezos, they use a liquid proof of stake method, meaning that you can unstake your tokens at any time, for any reason, with no lockup period. This is actually kind of unique to other staking methods. Let's get into some other problems that Tezos solves. Basically, by looking at the problems that existing blockchains are currently facing, Tezos was created. And it was created with the purpose to evolve the space and act as a DeFi revolution. I know, I know, it almost sounds too good to be true, and maybe it is, but just bear with me. Transaction costs, the self-amendment process, and smart contract issues are the biggest problems for DeFi, and a lot of this goes back to Ethereum's original proof-of-work architecture. Let's discuss how Tezos solves or improves each one of these. Number one, transaction costs. Crypto investors are frustrated with the increase in transaction fees, especially over the past few years when crypto continues to break higher to new records and are constantly flooded with new users. It doesn't take long to browse r slash ethereum or r slash cryptocurrency to start seeing memes about high gas fees, which gas fees are a technical term for ethereum's transaction costs. Fortunately, Tezos addressed this challenge when it was created, and it simply won't have the same problems that proof-of-work blockchains have when it comes to high transaction fees. Specifically, since its introduction, the Tezos network has undergone several successful upgrades, three of which happened in 2021. On August 6, the most current Granada upgrade was implemented and this marked the evolution of the platform to address transaction costs. Now, some of the advantages of this recent develop include a decrease in block creation time from 60 seconds to 30 seconds, and also a decrease in gas usage by smart contracts by up to a third. I mean, just take a look at this. In August, they had the most transactions in the whole history of Tezos, and the gas fees were so much less than the month before. The network already outperforms Ethereum and throughput and speed, and as the Tezos community focuses on growth, more advancements are likely. Secondly, we have the self-amendment process, and this is probably my favorite part of Tezos. Every DeFi platform requires constant updates and adjustments to solve new unexpected problems. Because new ideas within the cryptocurrency world are never ending, so any platform has to be flexible enough to adapt quickly. Upgrades usually require a lot of work, and most blockchain platforms use a fork-based governance model that is slow to adopt new changes. This means that major changes require other people to actually update their software. Well, the team at Tezos created an on-chain governance system that features self-amendment to draw up the coordination costs that come along with upgrades to a blockchain network. This is a fancy way of saying it is very easy to make future changes to the blockchain, opposed to the lengthy forking process that other blockchains have to do. And if there's one thing I've learned about Tezos by being in their Discord, it's that what they care about most is the blockchain that actually serves them to the best of its ability, not bottlenecked by something that could be easily fixed. By using the self-changing techniques, hard forks will likely be avoided. Now, not only is this system a much faster system, it also helps to avoid legacy tokens like Ethereum Classic and Bitcoin Cash, which was the result of a hard fork. 
By the way, we actually have a video on Ethereum Classic coming up soon, so if you've already enjoyed this video, we know that you'll love that one. Subscribe if you want to, and you'll also reward our hard work making these videos. Lastly, number three is smart contract issues. So developers that want to launch decentralized applications could be interested in the Tezos blockchain. The platform offers the ability to make tokens and dApps as an open source platform for smart contracts. Particularly, Michelson, which is the platform's primary smart contract language, delivers strong security via a, and bear with me as I couldn't find a better way to rephrase this, formal verification mechanism that ensures the code functions as intended. The Tezos functionality is useful for smart contracts and applications with significant real-world value, such as tokenized assets and loans. Right now, currently, the Tezos dApp ecosystem isn't as widespread like Ethereum or Binance or Matic, but I think it's because they're still working on certain protocols, and the ones that are being built are currently in the development phase. Smart contracts in Tezos are much different than in Ethereum, so the way that I understand it, developers are still kind of tinkering. There's actually a link in the description if you want to check out their current DeFi apps. And I also wanted to mention that Hick et Nuck, abbreviated HIN, is actually an NFT marketplace with a ton of daily active users, and it's on the Tezos blockchain. Finally, we get to a part of the video that a lot of people have been waiting for. How is Tezos different from Ethereum? There are some similarities between these two projects, but there are also some significant differences that make Tezos stand out. First and foremost, both are blockchain-based, decentralized ledgers and smart contract platforms. Let's get into their differences. First, Tezos agrees with Ethereum that maintaining the protocol dynamic and evolving is critical. But they take a different approach since Tezos uses a self-amending process. Ethereum, on the other hand, uses a soft and hard fork system. Now, if you're curious about the difference between soft and hard forks, you're lucky because we do have an entire video about it. Secondly, Tezos is one of the earliest blockchains to use a proof-of-stake consensus protocol right out of the gate, whereas Ethereum still uses proof-of-work. It should be noted, though, that Ethereum intends to switch to proof-of-stake soon, though. Lastly, in terms of smart contracts, Tezos just has completely different smart contracts than Ethereum. Ethereum created a low-level machine, called the Ethereum Virtual Machine, which requires higher-level coding languages to take advantage of it. Tezos, on the other hand, keeps its smart contracts simple and low-level. In fact, Tezos' Michelson was built from the ground up to be a simple target for formal verification, which may become far more important as smart contracts are used by people around the world. As we wrap up this video, we want to talk about the history and the future of Tezos. So in July 2017, Tezos executed its initial coin offering that raised $232 million, making it the largest ICO ever at the time. The Tezos Foundation, which is based in Switzerland, was established following the ICO to launch the protocol. Since then, the Tezos community is presently working on strengthening the course protocol's security and privacy, as well as providing more developer-friendly tools. One of Tezos' self-amendment upgrades, called Carthage, went into effect in March of 2020, and it actually made enhancements that allowed developers to do more powerful things with their smart contracts, and it also made it much safer in the process. Edo and Florence were also very powerful updates that gave a ton of other flexibilities in writing smart contracts. In my opinion, one of the largest and coolest concepts when it comes to Tezos is their agenda. I was asking some questions in their Discord to learn more about the protocol, and one of their users said this, Main thing that's good about Tezos is there's no organization that's also running the chain going around paying people like you to make content and shill the coin. When folks take an interest, it's genuine. And I personally think he's right. Ending this video, I had to share about the recent lawsuit against Tezos. The investors actually won a $25 million case for the argument that the ICO was an unregistered security sale. Now this doesn't really say anything about the coin, but it does show how much the US court systems feel about crypto. Also, I want to let you guys know if you're interested in a premium decentralized finance or DeFi guide that I have personally put together, check out whiteboardcrypto.com and you can get it for free. Well, that's all we have for Tezos today, but if you guys have any questions, don't hesitate to leave it in the comment section below, as Tezos is an attractive project with a great number of passionate supporters. Thank you guys so much for watching this video, we really hope that you've learned something, and above all, we hope to see you in our future videos.